Good morning, Trinity United Methodist Church family and friends. Happy to have you join us on this Sunday morning, Baptism of the Lord Day. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we worship God today. Please hear these words for our call to worship. Lost, wandering without purpose, meaning, value, acceptance, or place, we wander lost. But the Spirit of God descends like a dove upon us. We hear the ancient words that name and claim us as children of God. We are cleansed, refreshed, and made new in the love of those words. Please join me for our opening prayer. Most wonderful God, foolish and flawed though we are, we too delight in your beloved Son. In his name we gather in the house of many praises. May the heavens be opened for us that we may catch a glimpse of that light and love that transforms our common days with a beauty not of our making. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Of 
your presence let us experience glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience glory of your goodness Holy Spirit you are welcome come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Our psalm reading today comes from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord, Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Please join me as we go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, what a joy to come into your presence today and every day. As we worship today, we invite you into our spaces and to make your presence known in this time of worship. We are at the beginnings of a new year, new planners, new schedules, and new activities, but we know that you are a constant in the change, that you are the same each day and each year. We are thankful for your constant love and presence, and in the midst of the new year, we are reminded that while your love is constant, your mercies are new each day. We humbly thank you for your endless mercy, knowing that we have not earned it through our own merit. Lord, we know many who need healing of mind, body, and soul. We ask that you grant strength and healing to those who are suffering from COVID and other illnesses. We ask that you grant strength and healing to those who are suffering from depression and isolation. We ask that you grant strength and healing to those who feel lost and are searching. We ask that you use us to help all of these, that you use us in whatever ways you will for us to help others with the healing. Loving God, thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Each day, we thank you for those blessings. Let us remember those who are not as blessed. As we enter our warm homes, let us remember those who are cold. As we enjoy our dinner, let us remember those who are hungry. As we do our laundry, let us remember those who do not have extra clothes to wash. Thank you for our many blessings, but help us to see where we need to bless others. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name as we pray the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. May you hear these words. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you. I am well pleased. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, today is... Uh, Baptism of the Lord Day within our liturgical calendar. It always follows Epiphany Sunday. So we go from the Magi visiting the baby Jesus to Jesus being baptized. Now while the Magi only occurs in Matthew's Gospel and the birth narratives only occur in Matthew and Luke, the baptism of Jesus is recorded in all four Gospels, each slightly different, of course. But the fact that all four Gospels recount uh, the baptism should tell us of how important it is uh, to the life of our faith. Today we're looking at it from the Gospel of Mark. As I stated before, in Mark's Gospel, there, there are no magi, uh, there's no star guiding the path, there's no angels uh, singing a proclamation about Christ's coming. There's no shepherds tending their flock by night. The story begins with John and a river. If you've read Mark's gospel before, you know that it moves very quickly. Uh, in fact, one of Mark's very favorite words is immediately. The word immediately. The, the Greek word is eutheos. It's used 41 times in this gospel. I think it's used 58, 59 times in the entire New Testament. 41 times uh, in the gospel of Mark. Immediately. And even here we see the, the baptism, which the whole baptism event is three verses. Um, and then immediately... Verse 12, that I didn't read, but immediately the Spirit drives him into the wilderness. There's nothing about a conversation that occurred between Jesus and John that like appears in the Gospel of John. It just in and out, get it done, or as they say, get her done. The baptism itself was really just one sentence, one verse, verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. That's it. it it's almost like we skipped over the event um, if you don't pay attention. Now, given how much we argue about how and when of baptism within the whole of Christianity, you would think that there might be a little bit more detail there. But it's not. It's, it is almost as if the real importance is what happens afterward. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you. I am well pleased. Those three verses 
9, 10, and 11 is the entire baptism event in Mark's gospel. We'll get back to that in a moment. But first, I wanted to share a story. Another East Tennessee story. So, I got my love of gardening from my dad. We always had a, a big tilled garden, you know, the, the kinds with the long rows, uh, the, the type of garden that produced that expression, that is a long row to hoe, and I hoed them. But eventually, my dad added a, a, a couple smaller raised beds out by the garage. Um, each bed were for his two favorite things, one for tomatoes and one for watermelons. And each had um, the, the right compost and the right soil type and everything that was best for those plants. Our watermelon bed had a sandy, rich soil that they just loved. And we would generally get uh, the first watermelon around July the 4th, and we would get them through uh, Labor Day uh, would be around the, the ending. Well, July 4th, Dad would go out and choose the watermelon that we were going to have that day. And uh, we would go outside to eat it, of course, so that you could spit your seeds and let the juice just drip all over your face, all that good stuff. Well, I remember that this one year we were out there and um, you know, we were, we were eating that watermelon and it turned out that there was a yellow jacket's nest apparently not too far. Of course, they're, they're down in the ground. We didn't know it was there. And those juices of that watermelon brought out those yellow jackets and they began swarming around. And before you know it, one lands on my cheek. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm young. Uh, I don't remember what age, but, uh, you know, I kind of have that silent scream. <gasps> a mouth open and my mom's yelling for me to close my mouth because the yellow jacket's getting closer to, to crawling inside of it, getting those juices off my face. And before you know it, dad comes over and he swats that yellow jacket down and my mom yells, go wash your face. One of my favorite quotes of Martin Luther, the great reformer, is when he said, when you wash your face, remember your baptism. Do you remember your baptism? Some of you do, I'm sure. Those who were baptized as youth or as, as adults. But many of us don't. Uh, because it happened when we were too young. It happened before our memories began developing. But I was shown pictures of my baptism. Um, I know that my parents and big brothers and my godparents were there along with all the people at, at Christ United Methodist Church in Greenville, Tennessee. I've seen the photos. And I still remember what happened afterwards. Because now it is afterwards. The life that we live as baptized followers of Jesus is that afterward. The, the new creation that we choose to make of ourselves every single day is afterward. Let's talk about baptism for a moment. Baptism, first and foremost, is about identity. It is our initiation into the church. But more than that, it teaches us that we are God's beloved children. It is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, we say in the Methodist Church. It is the work of God, something that God does that we get to participate in. Nothing that we do or fail to do can remove the identity that God conveys as a gift. 
Baptism reminds us that we are all children of God. We can neglect that relationship. We can deny it. We can run from it. We can ignore it. But we cannot destroy it. For God loves us too deeply and completely. In an age in which it seems that so many relationships are fragile, that certainly is good news for us today. The second aspect of baptism is that we are to remember that we not only are claimed by God, but that we are called by God to do something and to do something special. And the Spirit descended upon him as a dove. As this was the case for Jesus, so it is for us as well. The Spirit of God descends upon you and upon me, calling us not simply to be God's children, but also to be God's helpers in a wounded and weary world, claimed and called. God loves us into loving. So here's my question that I have for us today. How do we live out this gift from God in our daily lives? Let me circle back around to Luther's quote. When you wash your face, remember your baptism. Baptism, though it's only conducted once because God's promises are always good, baptism was never really intended to be a once and done type event, but rather something that we remember and we renew daily, something that becomes meaningful in our everyday life. So here in this, this new year, 2021, I want to invite you, challenge you to remember. When you take a shower, when you wash your hands, when you wash your face, every time water is poured out upon your skin, may it be like God's love being poured out in your life. Remember those words. You are my beloved and with you. I am well pleased. Claim that for yourself. Remember your baptism. It isn't supposed to be just an empty ritual for, for Sunday mornings. Rather, it's a way of living that keeps our eyes open on the descending doves of the Spirit. And it's a choice that we can claim to to embrace the possibilities that are in front of us rather than the doubts that are within us or around us. It's an opportunity to know that we are loved and claimed and that whatever darkness is, is out there or whatever darkness is in here, that that does not define us anymore. Our lives are claimed and we are called as children of God to make a positive difference in the world. And we have this gift that we have been given. Whether we see it descending upon us like a dove or not, the Spirit of God is our constant companion throughout our lives. It is what inspires us to love and to serve and to learn and to grow. It is what equips us to be part of the body of Christ in, in unique and powerful ways. And whether we hear it or not, the word that is spoken over us is a word of affirmation. God proclaims you are my beloved, and with you I am well pleased. 
So in a time and in a day that it seems like the world is crashing in all around us. Darkness can overwhelm us. Just go wash your face. Remember your baptism. Remember that you are claimed and called by God. Remember that God's spirit is within you. Remember that you are God's beloved. And allow that reality to indeed give you strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Let us pray. O God who claims us as your own and who calls us to be your partners in the world. Descend as a dove Rest upon us and work through us each day, we pray, to make this world a little better. In your holy and loving name, we say, amen. We join together now in praying our benediction together. May the Lord bless you and keep you May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Now go wash your face and remember your baptism. Have a great week. Go in peace.